Hello, everyone. Uh, we see people are still joining. We'll give people a few minutes, or not a few minutes, a few seconds uh, to join in and adjust their uh, headsets before we begin. Okay, so uh, thank you so much everyone who joined us today. Uh, this is the seventh installment of our oral tech talks, uh, the webinar series that's been created by developers for developers that also happen to be into oral. Um, today we are talking about seamless integration 101. Uh, and we're going to be enhancing oral application with external APIs. And as you have probably noticed, we're going to be doing it with the help of Pokemon API. Uh, so what exactly we're going to be talking about today? So first, um, I'll take one or two moments just to um, do a few announcements. Um, this is a minute or two, but please don't switch channels. Those announcements are really um, interesting and exciting. Um, then uh, we will switch to our speakers and um, they will cover the integrations in oral, a little bit of theory, what are they, how we're using them. Uh, we'll go over oral maker, um, why it's useful and why it's recommended. We will go through the integration building workflow. Um, basically, some of the parts um, live, uh, you'll see some actual coding. Uh, we'll wrap it up with some recommendations from oral based on what we've seen, and uh, there will also be a little bonus uh, at the end of the session. And of course, uh, we have our Q&A session, so please uh, use the Q&A box and the chat box uh, to send your questions. Uh, so announcements. Um, you see that there is a new flavor to our tech talks uh, and i'm not just talking about this thing right now the pokemons but basically this fun was brought into the sessions by our partner Sinolia here uh, because so they not only know how to have fun but also know how to deliver seriously awesome code and um, great our application so if you feel inspired by today's session if you also know how to have fun if you want to bring a little bit of yourself into the oral tech talks and also share some creative ways to use oral applications creative ways to develop uh, we welcome uh, this um, initiative so please uh, do reach out send uh, your pitch directly to my email Another exciting announcement is uh, our oral uh, certification for developers and for business users. Uh, this is something that we just basically released this week. Uh, we are really happy and proud to share this with you. Um, this is a great way for uh, developers and system administrators, basically people working in the back end of uh, oral commerce to test their knowledge and to get officially certified um, and so we are not just inviting you to um, take the certification itself, but uh, to be a little bit more prepared. Uh, we're going to have a webinar scheduled for August the 17th. And uh, so I'll be sending all the links for you to uh, sign up and join uh, the session as well. And so I'm hoping that after the news about the oral certifications, you want like challenge accepted and to help you overcome this challenge. Uh, there's going to be a public instructor led training for developers uh, that's coming up in September and October uh, for EMEA and North American regions as well. So this is a recommended part for anyone willing to take the oral certification because it covers most of the uh, scope of the certification exam. Uh, so I'll be sending all the links shortly into the chat. Uh, thank you so much for joining once again, and I'm handing it over to our awesome speakers. Thank you, Anna. Could you see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. So, hello everyone. Do you know what this symbol means? 
me neither, <laughs> but is the cover of the last album of Sleep Token, one of my favorite bands at this moment. And I really invite you to listen to it because they are awesome. And as you realize, I really love uh, metal music. And also I really enjoy playing MMOs and RPG games. And also I really love being a father. I love my family and my kids. And I am proud to be the lead dev at Sinolia Latam. And I hope uh, this webinar will be useful, uh, interesting and fun for you. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Miguel. Thank you, Miguel. Sorry, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say that um, thank you for a great presentation. And guys, please uh, do share some information in chat. If you share the same hobbies that our speakers do, we would really love to uh, not just share more about our speakers, but learn more about you as well. And maybe thank raise. You so much. Okay, guys. So I'll start from the other side. Uh, from uh, my work. So I work in Oro uh, as a software developer, project lead uh, advisor and a trainer. And I really, really appreciate being a programmer. I find it very inspiring and it's really a lot of fun. It's never boring. Uh, but of course, when the work ends, there is still the other half of my life that you see on the pictures uh, that I try to spend as active as possible. Uh, so first of all, I do sing in a band. Uh, also, I adore the adrenaline that I have from racing on my motorbike. If you do, we can race. <laughs> and then, most of all, I'd love to see the whole world. So I'll try to travel as much as possible. And I also think, hope that you will have uh, a lot of fun uh, within today's webinar with us. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so let's start the webinar. Let's roll. Uh, so first we'll talk about the integrations themselves. What is integration? Uh, so in general, integration is uh, interaction with some third party application and it consists of all this um, process of first connecting and then uh, actual communication between our system and the other application. So for this, it usually requires credentials. This can be user password or authentication keys, etc. cetera. Uh, also integration, we can approach integration in multiple ways. So this can be remote procedure call, this can be SOAP or REST. Nowadays, it's mostly uh, REST, but basically this, uh, this will depend on your decision as a developer. Uh, so uh, those integrations will give us a lot of benefits in terms of having additional functionalities in our application. Uh, so whenever you activate an integration from this point, your application will be able to do tasks that it wasn't able to do before. And you get all this uh, for free, maybe not uh, totally for free because you still need to implement the integration itself, but all the functionalities that comes with the third party application will be there for you. You don't need to waste time to implement those. And we all know that time is money, so that's great. Uh, and uh, also integrations allow uh, multiple applications to exchange data between each other and make sure that they are in sync. Uh, so what integrations we have in Oro out of the box ready for you just to configure and activate them. If you go to admin panel and open system manage integrations, you will have a list of all your um, configured uh, integrations. This list can be empty. You can have a lot of them. You can always create a new one or edit existing. So let's create a one. Uh, under the type, we have a drop list of all the available out of the box available integrations that we have in Oro. You can create, of course, your own and we'll create a Pokemon um, integration today. Uh, then for each integration, we have a name. Uh, so you always need to name uh, integration instance somehow. Then all the other options are actually integration specific. So each integration will have different set of options that you need to fill in in order for your integration to work properly. 
Uh, then uh, we have a list of connectors. Uh, for Zendesk, this is user tickets and comments. You can enable all of them. You can enable only some of them. Uh, and if the integration allows a two-way sync, so for example, not only importing data, but also um, exporting data, uh, then you will have this enable two-way sync switch. And if you select it, you also need to specify priority. So either remote wins or local wins. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, creating this integration, adding this integration is really simple, but this is not all the advantages that we have from it. So, if you have some functionality that you need to add, and if you decide to do it with an integration instead of adding it as a simple CLI command, then you will have two big benefits out of it. First is this configurable that we saw. So, imagine whenever um, any credentials change, then you can just go to back office, change those credentials at any time. You don't need to change things in code and deploy the application. Uh, then you can also have multiple uh, integration instances of the same application. So we can create two instances for Zendesk and they can have even totally different configuration. But for example, one can um, integrate uh, have enabled only tickets connector and second users connector. One can be one way sync, the other can be two way sync. And on today's webinar, we'll create this really, really awesome uh, integration with Pokemon API. Yeah. And you're probably wondering why Pokemon API? Why Pokemon? I think, I think the answer is very simple is because Pokemon is familiar for everyone, for the game probably, or maybe for the TV show, but I know it's for the game in your case, right? <laughs> and also this API, it's really easy to use. And also it has a lot of functionalities that we expect for an API, like the count of the total lines, the links to the next and previous URL, also some results, pagination. And this on this example, we have the list of Pokemons, for example, with the name and the URL of the information of each Pokemon. So it's awesome to work with this API if you need to test or do some interesting things. So how should I start if I want to create an integration with Pokemon, for example, and fetch all the list of Pokemons? I really recommend you to use Oromaker why? Because it was a tool made by Oro for us, for developers, and it's really easy to configure it. So instead of build an entity with all the CROD, with all the configurations from scratch, you can just create a YAML file like you see here with some very basic options like the organization name, package name, and then I want an entity and those are my fields and that's it. I can show you a bit the result of the maker. For example, here we have this controller already made with all the routes, all the ACL already there, all methods that we need, also the translate files. We can see all these translations here. We have our entity everything already set, the form and everything. So I can show you here, for example, this is the menu made by the Oromaker, my data grid and also my buttons to create my fields and everything. So it's awesome. You can start to work uh, very quickly. So let's get to coding, coding <laughs> finally. OK, uh, so what stays behind all this magic that we have in integration? What elements you need to implement in order to have a proper integration? So first element is a channel. And this is basically a type of our integration. So as you remember from the back office, uh, the list of in integrations is actually the list of channel types that we had on this list in the back office. Uh, then uh, there is a transport layer. 
uh, that has access to the settings that we specify for our integration. And then we have a list of our connectors. And the idea behind this is that uh, all the processes in the integration are executed uh, by the connectors through the transport layer. And this is basically asynchronous on the integration level. So if you have two different integrations or two integrations of the same type even, and they can be processed, they will be processed in parallel. But this is synchronous on a connector level. So if you have an integration with multiple connectors, they will all be processed one after the other in one process. Uh, so connectors are processed in some order that you can, but you don't need to specify. And behind all this, there is a Oracron command that is responsible for checking and starting all the active integrations. So the first element is our channel, and this basically represents integration uh, type, uh, like, for example, Zendesk. And here, the only things that you need to specify is label and icon, because this label and icon will then be used in back office to show you your integration on the list. And let's see Pokemon channel. Class. Yeah, to show you an example, let me close down this. Um, we have this channel type with only the label and the icon. The icon is optional, but I know everyone wants to put an icon there because it looks like great. <laughs> and if you use that icon, you have to just implement this interface and put the path of the icon here. And the service, you have to register the channel like this using this tag or integration channel, and also it's mandatory to add the type of the channel. So at the moment, it's really easy to configure this channel. Okay, the other element, next element is our transport. Uh, this is our representation of a communication gateway. So in order for the transport to be able to connect to third party application, it needs to have a reference to the integration settings. And also here inside the transport, we will have all the methods that allow us to interact with, with third party application. And uh, also please remember that this should be the only place that knows how to interact with third party application. Yeah. We have this Pokemon transport in this example, and I choose to use the abstract REST transport because as you remember, we have different protocols to use SOAP, for example. But for this example, I, I use this REST transport and we have some mandatory methods to fill like the label, for example, it's a translation key. And also we have other methods like the transport setting type and also the entity that we will see on the next slides. And the definition of this transport is very similar to the channel, is just tag this name with transport. You have to add a type for this, and also you have to specify what is the channel type. And in this case is the channel type that I did before. Okay, so as we already told you, the transport layer needs to know how to communicate with third party application, how to connect with it. So for this, we have actually two elements. One is entity, second is a form type. So entity, this is basically the list of our settings. It contains its values and it helps us to save them to the database. Then the form type is uh, the one that is rendered on our integration create and edit page and allow user to fill in those integration settings values. And behind this form type, there is only just standard symphony form type, nothing specific there. So if I show you this entity, the entity creator that I create for this was this one. And as you can see, I put just an URL because it's the only thing that I need from the Pokemon API because I don't need any credentials or token or manage anything, just the URL of the Pokemon. And as you can see, it's a default Symfony form. And my entity, the difference between the normal Symfony entities and this one, as you can see, this extent of transport. So here I need to 
create all these um, methods and fields that I will need for my integration. And as I said, for this example, I only need an URL. So was the only field that I have here, added here. And the last element is our connector. Uh, so connector, it's used to execute the communication, for example, import or imported export. So this can be one way or two way uh, synchronization. And the difference is that uh, import is usually executed periodically by a cron command or uh, on demand when you click the sync button on integration view page. On the other hand, export is usually bound to some kind of a listener. Uh, for example, when product changes, then we push that data to third party application so we do the export and in order for connector to execute proper processes processes it knows about import export jobs that execute the sync and also always think of a connector as a trigger so it triggers the communication but it actually uses transport layer to do the real communication with the third party application yes for example i create this connector called Pokemon list connector, that it's the connector in charge to fetch all the list of my Pokemons. And as you can see, I extend this abstract connector and I implement this connector interface that has all the methods that I need to configure my connector. So as you can see, we have my label with a key translation. I have my Pokemon entity here. And I also, I put my import job name. So we should uh, set your job on the batch job files. And for example, here I use my uh, connector as a reader and Oro has already processors and writers to use depending of your necessities. For example, here I use this processor and writer to start to process and save on my database all the list of Pokemons. And my connector also has an iterator that I built for this example. And my iterator mainly manage all the logic to fetch the information, to use the count of the total page, the parameters to start to work with the pagination. But the principal thing is this connector with my job and also I have this way to definition of the connector. And as you can see, it has a similar tag of the others. This is a connector, my type. And also I have to specify what is the channel type of my connector. So finally, let's create our Pokemon integration through the back office. And as you can already saw here, I have my Pokemon integration already created. And as I told you, I just create this base URL. This is the Symfony form that I told you before. And I will enable this connector for this integration. So you know this integration should work with our job, so let me open my message queue here. And now if we press on schedule sync, this will be schedule a job to process this connector and fetch all this information of all my Pokemons. So you can see as well this statuses section below. And this status is really important because you want to know what happened with your connector, right? If you get uh, an errors or anything, you have to be able to see what happened. So here you will see the result of the integration. If you got any error, you should see the, the answer here and you can start to debug what happened and everything. So in my case, for example, the connector was complete and I have this awesome result here that says, the numbers of rows that were read, proceed, and also added. So awesome, right? <laughs> For me, it's, this is awesome. 
And if we want to see what happened with my Pokemons, do you remember I told you that we have this entity? So if we check here, we will see the list of Pokemons. Cool, right? We have the URL. I put the URL and the name of the Pokemon. And as we can see here, we have this same information, name on URL. And something is missing, right? You see this image on type broken, but let's go to the next slide. So there is a question. Could I use my integration in a custom service? What happened, for example, if I want to manage all the logic to fetch the images and the types in a custom service in something totally apart, but using the same transport with the same settings and everything? Is it possible? And the answer is yes, we can. So for this example, I did a command here, a very simple one with some validations. It's a symphony command. You already know this. I validate if I have the list of Pokemons and also I validate if I have my channel already set. But the key here is this transport that I inject on my command, my Pokemon transport. This is the first important thing. The second one is you have to initialize this transport using your channel. So I did this method to just get the channel with the name and the type of the Pokemon. I initialize my transport and now I am be able to use the client directly here. So I did a very quick loop here with a progress bar to um, loop my Pokemons and I use the client here, as you can see. And I passed the URL, I saved my URL on this code uh, field, by the way. And we can pass um, this information here, and then I will set the image and the type of my Pokemons. And I did a batch here to fetch to 20, 20 by 20, to not overload the Pokemon API, because on this case, I want to fetch the URLs one by one. So to show you my comment, let me stop my message queue. Let me list my commands. And here I have this command that I made. Let me run it. I have this alias on my local VC. It's been console. <laughs> I work with a lot of alias with my team. So as you can see, I fetch 20 Pokemons and the information was obtained successfully. So let's see if we refresh this. Now we have my types and my images there. Awesome, right? <laughs> and also was very fun to, to develop. So finally, I have my Pokemons. I catch my Pokemons. <laughs> So conclusions. Uh, yeah, uh, let's go to the conclusion and actually the some useful tip for you, uh, which may be helpful while testing it. So there is a command that you can execute uh, from a command line uh, and it starts the integration and this is Oracron integration sync. Uh, so as you saw uh, in this webinar, creating an integration is uh, quite easy thing to do and it's very, very beneficial. Uh, however, it can also uh, have some uh, complexity issues or security issues there. That's why we recommend you to follow a few of our best practices. Uh, so first thing is isolate work, which basically means that the transport layer should be the only place that knows how to communicate with third party application. Uh, failure tolerance. Uh, so basically, whenever you have a timeout or you have a bad request or response, uh, this type of failure tolerance you need to implement on your site in your integration. And also, please do not forget about optimization. Some integrations can be very complex and they can process, process tons of data. Uh, that's why it's always good to 
think about optimization, uh, not only on a code level, but maybe also on a business logic level. And we gathered here a list of all the resources and documentation of everything that we talked today. Uh, so first links, those are links to our documentation. Then you have a link to Pokemon API uh, documentation. And at the very bottom, there is a link to our repository to the code that Miguel showed you today. Uh, so it's there for you uh, and let's use it. But uh, that's not everything that we prepared for you today. Uh, we wanted you to have even some more fun. So we made use of our integration even more. And if you ever feel lonely, <laughs> if you ever got stuck at some point of your programming, or you just feel some anxiety, we have a perfect way for you to relax. And this is by catching Pokemon. So everything you need to do, all you need to do is download our code, install it, and go to the home page. If you do so, on the home page, on the very top, you will see a toolbar of our Pokemon game. And if you click Start, then our little nice funny Pokemons will pop up and you'll be able to catch them and score some points. And believe me, guys, this is totally relaxing. Yeah, maybe you could share the game on, on your screen. I shared the screen. I didn't. No, it was fine oh. for me. Oh, yeah, sorry, I because I have to stop mine. And I can catch the Pokemons on and on. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. I love this integration, seriously, guys. Okay, so um, we might have lost Jacqueline now to <laughs> the Pokemon game. Um, so in the meantime, uh, please think about um, questions uh, that you would want to ask our uh, speakers, uh, we thank you for joining, for participation. I sent a link in chat to provide feedback to the content that we uh, shared during today's webinar. So please do. We really appreciate uh, your input. And uh, yeah, the game that Jacqueline shared is really uh, kind of contagious. So we do welcome you to um, let us steam a little bit and, and relax playing and catching Pokemons. And if you do enjoy it, please share. Uh, we have hashtags or tech talks and our dev fun for, for things like that. I uh, would appreciate it. Uh, so um, if you don't questions, don't have questions at this point, but uh, they come up later down the line, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. So again, uh, any type of questions or comments uh, regarding the or tech talks in general, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, Jacqueline and Miguel's uh, emails are also on the screen. So if you have any questions in terms of the um, development tips and tricks, or you just wanna have a chat, uh, please also reach out. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we'll be sharing the recording and the slides um, probably in about 24 hours after the session. Um, have a great day. Take care. <laughs>